there is an abundant offering of mystery and wonder within our universe. But what do you get when you infuse humor and joy into each and every conversation to helping others gain insight within that mystery and wonder within our everyday lives? Well, you get the Mystery and Wonder podcast where you will gain exactly that, a greater experience to the abundance within. And so here is your host for today's podcast, Trixie Woodcock Phelps, only on Real Revolution Radio X. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. I am Trixie Phelps, founder and owner of my business, Healing Business Soul Balancing, and now with my new podcast show, Mystery and Wonder, where we're exploring the universe and its extraordinary and amazing life, past, present, and future. Thanks again for joining me here. I am so excited to share with you my experiences as well as those of my guests. So let me first give you a little bit of information about me and how I came to be here. I am a fifth generation sensitive, intuitive, empath, and healer. As a little girl, I can recall looking around in the room, you'll see spirits, or I hear someone talking to me when there was no one around. And thankfully, these kinds of experiences for me, at least in this lifetime, were not uh, traumatizing enough that I shut them down. They were very friendly and very welcoming, and it did often feel very safe. You know, and I felt the energy that would come out of my hands when I was with animals or other kids, you know, never really fully understanding that. And as I got older, so I believe in my early 20s, it was when my dad was having some health issues, some knee pain, back pain, and he was fighting cancer. So during a visit, of course, I was feeling his pain. And I had placed my hand on his knee for a moment. We both had fell silent. And then he says to me, you have the hands of an angel. And that actually struck a chord in me. And that's when I feel like that light really came on as a young adult to begin exploring my gift. Because I'd already had those little promptings and, you know, cues. <laughs> this just sort of anchored that in for me. And of course, many years later, as I connected uh, with so many beautiful teachers, my first shamanic teacher, Reiki teacher. I did animal Reiki. I also have connected with an amazing palmistry teacher. <laughs> I learned to wrap crystals and taught myself how to make jewelry and I come across another shamanic teacher. And of course, with all the combined gifts and talents and offerings, it just made sense to bring that together in the healing business that I now operate through called Soul Balancing or soulbalancing.world if you would like to check that out. I love how amazing and synchronized things are with the universe when they come across our path. I had been wondering at what direction I was going to take, you know, as, as the career was bringing me somewhere, and I just felt that waiting period. But as I look back in hindsight now, I can remember having those, spark, uh, those thoughts that sparked my interest about how great it would be to be a radio host and asking all the questions. <laughs> and sometimes I'll listen to other radio show programs and maybe ask them, I go, but what about that question? We asked them this question. So it was always sort of playing in the background for me. <laughs> And of course, looking back, I can recall all the times I've enjoyed um, and being guided to play and learn certain audio and video software, you know, playing with sound effects and making voiceover commercial ads. A little did I know <laughs> that it would eventually bring me to where I am now. Um, I was already connected with Joel on Facebook. He's my producer here on Real Revolution Radio, and it was through a mutual friend. We had been connected, I believe, for quite a while, maybe even a year or so. And on this one particular day, Joel was teaching a live video, and during the video, he made the announcement that he was looking for host. Well, I felt the immediate ping in my belly, and of course, I reached out to him. And after a few months of working out the little details, here I am, now beginning a new adventure with Real Revolution Radio XO and with my new show, Mystery and Wonder. And it's here that I invite a variety of professionals that covers a variety of topics within the metaphysical industry. And speaking of which, I would love to now introduce you to my palmistry teacher and friend, Myrna Lou Goldbaum. Hi, Hi, how are you? How I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm excited. Good, good. Yes, I'm so, so thrilled to have you here. And I want to give our listeners a little bit of background on you. So let me go ahead and read uh, your bio information and then give them your, U your URL or your website so they could be checking out that while we talk. 
Myrna Wu, her mission is to guide one on the path for the best opportunities given what she sees on your palm for the future. Everyone has free will to change, to move forward in life. Sometimes a small nudge out the door by the palmist is all they need to find happiness in relationships or work. Myrna listens to her clients and supports their individual truth. In palmistry, communication is key. Myrna Lou has 60 plus years of palm reading experience with an accuracy rate of 90 to 95% of the basic lines, which are life, love, work, reproduction, and the bracelet. Palmistry helps individuals get in touch with the inner self and facilitates self-empowerment for their highest good. Myrna Lou is known as the soulmate specialist. She is an author of four books, three on palmistry and a paranormal novel with a palm reading palm reader in her story. I think that's pretty cool. (laughs) She has written articles for numerous magazines, newspapers, newsletters, and has been a guest on radio and TV shows nationwide. She is the only palmist in the world reading palms live on air. She was interviewed on CBS, a national radio, three times. She teaches palmistry, reads palms in her Florida home, either in person or remote, does lectures, palm reading parties, and works in psychic fairs. If you're interested in finding her books, they're, I believe, all found on Amazon. One of them is named May I See Your Hand, Palm Reading for Fun and Profit. Another, Soulmate Connections, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Relationships, Love, Romance, and Soulmates. Her third book is Diary of a Palm Reader, Palm Reading Sessions. That one sounds interesting as well. And of course, her fourth book is Cruise to the Other Side, A Metaphysical Journey. This is the paranormal novel. <laughs> and then, as I mentioned, you can visit her website to find out this information or as other details at www.myrnalu.com and that is spelled M-Y-R-N-A to Myrna and Lou is L-O-U. I'll repeat that one more time. Myrna Lou, M-Y-R-N-A-L-O-U, MyrnaLou.com. So check her out. And again, welcome, Myrna. So glad to have you here. So excited to see what you're going to share with us today. <laughs> it should be a great, fun day. Yes, yes. And Myrna used to live here in Colorado where I am currently located, and this is how we had become connected. And uh, it was actually, I want to share how I, how I did that, how that came for me from my perspective anyway. <laughs> okay. We were at a we were at that small metaphysical um, event in Lyon, I'm sorry, in Niwot. And in Niwot, there is a small gathering. It's not a big building, and so there were readers and stuff. And I figured this particular time I wasn't going to be that person working the booth. I wanted to be the attendee and get those readings. <laughs> and at the time I went in, I'd not known a whole lot about palmistry at all. And what little I did know obviously came from TV, <laughs> where they just source that awful thing, <laughs> really drama- dramatize it. And so I'm waiting for my turn on a couple of tables where I'd signed up for, and I'm waiting. And I had a good solid 20 minutes at least for waiting, and Myrna's table was open. And I sat there waiting in that chair, and I look at her, and I look at her table, and I sit there, and I go, no, mm -mm, ain't doing it. No. (laughs) I remember how adamant I felt. I thought I walked (laughs) over to you. I think um, I walked over to you and said, I'm free. Yeah. Yeah, you may have. You may have, actually. Yeah, I know there was some prompting as I sat there that was like, you know, just check it out. Just kind of be curious. So that may have been how we connected. And I did. I went over and I thought, I'll check it out. I'll get that palm reading. And I was so nervous, I remember, not sure what to expect. Of course, I was only basing this off of, the, you know, what we see on TV. <laughs> and so I sit down and Myrna was so accurate. And she was so right on. And it sent chills through my body. And I saw her pamphlet, and she was teaching classes, and it was like everything about it was wonderful. I just, I threw out my old concepts of what that was supposed to be like, which was really great. I had a great feeling. And I took her up on her classes. Eventually, when she was offering the next set of classes, well, not only did I take it once, I think I took it like three times, two or three times. <laughs> yeah, two or three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, I just really couldn't get enough of it. It was like there was so much interest. It was so intriguing, the information that comes from Well, you know what? I think every hand has juice on it, and I like to discover it, you know, uncover everything. All the details, yeah, and what information is there. Yes, it's very fascinating. 
Right. So, so Marina, tell us, how, how did you get started? What brought you into this direction? From um, your I was 10 years old when I got started, and as of today, I have 56,762 readings under my belt, and I've been counting wow. them since I was 10. My sister was yeah. number one. So um, when I was in the fourth grade or third grade, I showed up at a hospital where my mother was a nurse to get a ride home, and she couldn't leave. So she said, sit down here and read this book. I have to stay eight hours. The other shift didn't show up. And I got all noisy and carrying on because a kid that age, eight hours is like forever. And Mm -hmm. I started reading the book, and I couldn't understand one word in there, but I saw the illustrations. So I studied it. We went home after eight hours. Then I went back every day for six months. Every single day after school, I took two buses. I had to transfer, get there, sit in that hospital, and study those pictures, and then I got it. And one day I went Mm -hmm. home, and I did my sister, and I was right. To this day, she won't (laughs) let me look at her hand. (laughs) (laughs) But I get it 90 to 95% right, so I think that's pretty good. That's really good, yes. And that's how I started. Nice. Wow, what an amazing story, really. Yeah, getting in there. That's excellent. And so this has just led you through the years to different events and different expos or fairs or festivals or gatherings or parties of all sorts that just kind of... Well, I was going to retire when we moved here and I couldn't. (laughs) And now I'm going to be 80 and I still can't. (laughs) So I yeah, think I'll be doing this as long as I can talk, and I have two eyes. I can still do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we giggle about that because there's a group of us that uh, know Myrna in Colorado here and uh, where she used to live. And, of course, we, we know, yeah, she's going to go to Florida. She's moving. You had saved a ton of money from your palm reading participation. I bought a house here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we bought amazing. our house with palm reading money. Yeah, I think that's just so fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> anything <laughs> possible. <laughs> I think that's really cool. But yeah, those well, of us here that I teach every out of, You have the book that I teach out of. Uh-huh. It's called May I See Your Hand. Yes, and it I'm is. And I'm still teaching classes in that. It's amazing, yeah. To just be there and see. And, of course, I would get done with the class, and then I would go, oh, good. I go get all my friends, and I, you know, a few clients that, that were willing to also do that, I'd take pictures of their palm. I don't know if you remember this, <laughs> but what I did is I took a stack on a half sheet of paper. I printed two up on a page, and then I cut the pages in half, and I brought a small stack. It was a good size. It might have been small, but it was a good size stack for a bunch of palms. <laughs> yeah, and we, yeah. I came to your house, and I think and you brought me a whole bunch of paper. You brought me a whole uh-huh. bunch of people's hands. Exactly. Said, yeah, I think we were... <laughs> And you said, I don't understand that. this line, and what does that mean? And we went through all of them, and you said, I get it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it's you got amazing, it. the different, yeah, the way that, I love it now. I do. I really, really love it. It's a, it's a lot of fun to just see the surprise and some of their reactions to this information that they actually have on their palm. And it is kind of funny, too, when you get somebody who, it is like they don't believe in it, but yet once they know that you do what you do, then they're not showing your hand. So somewhere they must really believe. <laughs> well, <laughs> here's the thing. So nervous. <laughs> if somebody's a skeptic and then you get them, they can't be a skeptic anymore because they go, "You don't even know me, and you know that." You know. Right. So I, right. I once did. Um, I did Gerald Ford at a party up in. Right. The, it was in Beaver Creek, I think, at a place called the Eagle's Nest. And, I, and when I lived in Colorado, I worked for a bunch of different agencies that sent me out. And so I was doing this party, and there were ten of us, ten, two palm readers, two belly dancers, two of everything. And um, he got in my line with the Secret Service. And he sat down, he was real abrupt, and he said, I don't believe in this. I don't know what I'm even doing in your line. And I didn't know who it was till I looked up, and I went, oh, no. And I don't usually waste a prayer on myself, but that day I did. And I said, please make me really good. I'll be good if you just make me tell me, let me tell him something he did, that he knows and I know and nobody else does. And I got it. He jumped up and he goes, I'm a believer. <laughs> so from a skeptic to a believer in two minutes. Because I told him something when he was 19 that he did. That he said, Betty Ford doesn't even know that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's so funny. I love it. Yeah, good yeah. good. And thanks to our teams for helping us bring that information through. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
spiritual guides, our intuition, that knowing, yeah, that connection to the other side? Well, I think we're all psychic a little bit. It's just if you use that muscle a lot, it gets stronger, just like yours. It does. Very, very true. The more true. you do very, anything, very yeah, the more you yes. do anything, you get better at it. It's very, very true. Yeah, if you stick with it long enough, right, it becomes mm-hmm. more proficient that you're yeah increasingly getting better well i always say if you play the piano first you learn with one hand then you do two hands then they teach you with two hands and the foot pedal then that thing is going tick tock tick tock and you try and keep in rhythm you know that's the same thing with palmistry first you start out like a baby and then pretty soon you're pretty good Mm mm-hmm very cool very accurate so you're still teaching these classes out here out there in florida correct right right yeah I do like eight or ten people in my house at a time, or I go to different events and places where they have a room that I'll do it or in a church. And Mm -hmm. so if I have enough people who don't know each other, I make them read each other and I listen, and I can tell Mm -hmm. if they got it or not. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really helps to get that embodied feeling uh, doing the practicing. Well, in a group setting, they all hear what I'm saying, but then I don't know if they really get it unless I hear them do something. Mm-hmm. I, said, yeah. I think that's a wonderful balance, yeah, yeah, to help but them the classes, better. But the classes, then they all buy the book because I tell them you don't have to buy the book, but if you don't and you get stuck, you have nothing to look up. You know, if you want to look something <laughs> yeah. up, it's like a little encyclopedia. You can just leaf through there, find what you need. Mm-hmm. And make so, your own notes, which is really great. So it becomes like a customized journal as well. Uh, yeah, that's what how it, I wrote it that way, so it would be easy to you know understand it I look for the book I learned on for 40 something mm-hmm. years and I couldn't find it because I didn't know the author or the title I just knew what it mm-hmm. looked like and one day mm-hmm. in Boulder Colorado I was at a fair on the green right in front of the courthouse and a man sat down and I started to read him and he said you sound just like a book I have at home and I described the book I said it's brown six by eleven he goes yeah I said a hardback he says yeah said does it have a hand on the front he says how did you know that so he gave me the book and it's the one I learned from oh I gave wow. him my book <laughs> my book was brand new at that time it was 1997 so I gave him my book and he gave me his oh wow that's amazing oh if it's I knew where that was I get it I, it's up in the attic somewhere all wrapped up I had to have it re um bound because wow. all the pages mm-hmm. were falling out my it was God, written wow. in 1895. Ooh, wow. Yeah, there's no other teachings like that online. <laughs> and yeah, you couldn't and find it me, anywhere. I've looked. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Oriental, and it's not Hindu-Indian, and everybody else knows Hindu. Oh. But yes. there's 15 or 16 kinds of palm reading. It is, there's, you know, oh, a lot yeah. of, there's Mediterranean, Italian, there's all different. Wow. Yeah, it makes it just a challenge, or for sure, which is all the more reason why I felt like I really needed to embrace whatever you were offering to feel like I fully got it before, <laughs> before so I committed to You got it the first time, it. and then you said, do you give, I did the first <laughs> class, and you said, is there a detailed second class? And I said, no, it's the yeah. same thing. So you took it again, and you said, that was all different. And I said, well, I never say the exact same thing in every class. <clears throat> so you said, I got more information from the second one. Yeah, I think true. you only took it's it two true. times. Uh. Yeah, I may have. It may have only been twice. And then maybe that other third one is when I came to your house. I remember that as well. Well, that so wasn't really that. a lesson. I was reading all the pictures that you had of people that you took. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very good. It was wonderful, and I do appreciate your time in that because it's made a tremendous difference in my life and how I'm moving forward. Well, and then you're the doing classes and parties and stuff yeah. too, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yes, yes, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to teach others and see them broaden and expand with, you know, a tool that is, is relatively uh, accurate, really, and, and easy to work with, you know, and it's something so right there. So when you there. did you um, Celebration, to... you said that you were doing a, a subbing for somebody one of the days. How did you do? <laughs> yeah, this last week. It, well, the day itself was a slower day. There wasn't a lot of traffic to begin with, but it was really good. So there was a lot of first-timers that came to the booth no that kidding. day for me. Yeah, yeah, a lot of us, we've never done this. We've done these and those and all these other types of readings, you know, but they hadn't done palmistry readings yet, so they sat down. It was a lot of fun. This <laughs> one gal, was, she was kind of persistent. Don't tell me my future. I don't want to know. She's shaking her head no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 
know, so I did. I just kind of giggled a little bit, and I said, it's, it's not what you think. You know, if, if anything, it's just the potential. It's only giving you an idea or like a heads up because your future is not set in stone. I think that That's helps you to feel a little That's more relaxed. That's what free will is all about, about yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just as the, right in this moment, I told her, the momentum that's built up is all that we're seeing. But, you know, when the time comes, she still has a choice to choose. And that's what I told her, you know, to what direction or how she'll respond to whatever's happening or, you know, those kinds of things. It's still in her free will. So she, I think, was open a little bit, but I still didn't go far with it because I knew she was a little trepidation about it. <laughs> oh, but you had fun at the fair. I used, I did that fair oh, yeah. for 20 years, all three days. Yes. 20 oh, yes, years. Oh, yes, yes. That's so a, a lot of those time. people in Colorado knew who I was, and they would come to me every year, and they say, "I need yes. an update. I need an update." You know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true because the lines on your palm change, right? Every six like months. About every, yeah, about every six months. That's what I continue to tell them as well. And they change constantly, but it's about every six months that they're significantly different enough they can get a different reading. Right. right? That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, changes within six months. Then there's new things that show up. Yeah. So I do yeah, parties, mm-hmm. and when I do, I did a party not too long ago, and I said you have to have ten people, and the hostess will get it free. Fourteen showed up, and the phone kept ringing, and people wanted to come, and I said, "Oh, fourteen's enough, dear." I was there from two <laughs> thirty in the afternoon till ten at night. Oh wow, wow! Because that's a long in time. the middle of that, I stand up and give a little talk, so the ones who never did it before aren't so scared. <laughs> Because they're oh, all yeah, nervous. Nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I give about a five or ten minute talk. Then I stop to eat about halfway through, and so it was a long day, but it was fun. They all liked it, so yeah. did I. Yes, yes, I did a, a party at a, um, a readings. It was at a solstice party, and that was I thought really fascinating. A woman that had put together like a solstice gathering for celebration and. I'm looking for entertainment, and that was a, a yeah. first for me in that sense. That was a lot of fun, yeah. A lot of good energy, you know, during that time as well. Well, and the Makes people it, who it, come understand <laughs> what solstice is anyway, so they True, know that right. it means change. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And not everybody there did it, right? There are still some that were very reserved and skeptic, but that's okay, because those that had the reading and then they'd leave and go into the group of the people, they'd be talking about how great <laughs> Oh, you know, but they so usually it, don't want to tell everything that you tell them anyway. They, oh, they no, no. share some no, of they, it and some is personal. Uh, it is, it is. And some people and cry. Too. Do you know what I found yes. out? The men cry yeah. more than the women. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had, I'm not well, sure Well, when I, I do them here, if I get that. a man and they say, I must have allergies, my eyes are watering, and I have to leave <laughs> the room until they calm down, because I know oh. that's not why they're crying. It's because I got them, mm-hmm. and I yeah. call them on it. Yeah, yeah. A secret they likely didn't think anybody knew or something about them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you one thing real quick. Um, Anybody Mm -hmm. that hears this show will get a reading at 50% off. So I do that with any show that I do. So um, normally I charge 100 and I would charge 50. But they have to email me. They'd have to email me if you want to give my email out or I can because I have a link I have to send them. You bet. We're about to go to commercial, so this is a good time. Go ahead and, and give okay, your email. Okay, so my email would be palmist, P-A-L-M-I-S-T, at Myrna Lou, and that's M-Y-R-N-A-L-O-U dot com. Very good. Palmist at Myrna Lou dot com, and our website is Myrna Lou dot com. And if you'd like to give her a call or ask for a confrontation free, just keep it short. You know, if you're calling, 941-412. 4916 to schedule a session or do that. I believe you can do that through your website. Is that correct, Luna? Yeah, that's, I do it on the website when it's remote. Yeah. Yeah, so that's easy because it comes through the system that way, I would think, right? Well, I sit with the phone in my hand and their hand in front of me and I read it. So yeah, two weeks okay. ago I did two video recording shows, two different shows almost back to back and I got 14 ratings from them. Oh, right on. So that was a yeah, lot, yes, seven yes, from each one. That, that is was a lot. Like, that's quite a bit, yeah. That's excellent. All right, very good. So take a time during our break and commercial here to visit her website, MyrnaLou.com, and find out more about what she's offering and where she's at. Maybe take her up on her 50% off discount, and we'll return after this break.
Whether it's coming from the world of entertainment, integrative medicine, quantum theory, conspiracy facts, ancient archaeology, sacred geometry, financial trends, or perhaps even from the very world of self-help and motivational speaking, Real Revolution Radio possesses the information you need. Listen today to our daily inspiring lineup of podcast radio talk shows only on realrevolutionradio.com. Today to the Marine Show, where we will introduce you to the world of alternative remedies. Join Marine Pisani as she hosts discussions with leading experts in the fields of hypnotherapy, acupuncture, yoga, Ayurveda, EFT, chronic healing, integrative medicine, and so much more. Marine will also brave topics that many consider taboo. Yes, taboo talk. Tune in today to the Marine Show heard on popular social media and now on Smart TV. To a higher level of consciousness. Tune in to RealRevolutionRadio.com, the number one source for independent music and inspirational podcast radio. Awaken, evolve, inspire, and join the evolution only on RealRevolutionRadio.com. You're listening to RealRevolutionRadio.com. There's hope as long as you're alive. Thank you for joining me back on the second segment of the show with my special guest, Myrna Lou. And I, again, invite you to take her up on her offer. She's doing remote readings, the 50% off, send in clear photos. And try not to stretch your hands too far. That takes away from some of the smaller lines. Maybe a clear would be good, a focused and clear Photoshop of the palm, the dominant hand, whichever you eat and write with the most using um, the camera to collect the information or lines from the fingers as well as the wrist and all around the thumb and of course the palm, the main palm area. Um, just some real clear focused photos so she can see those lines. Is, is well, that. I'm sitting here with else? your hand right in front of me right now, <laughs> which I know by heart. But anyway, um, I just now opened my email while you were on break and I saw that you sent yeah. me two pictures of your hand. So let me tell you yeah. what's coming for you. All right, all right. You might all right. be Hang shocked. On, people. <laughs> yeah. right, here we you go. might be shocked. You're young enough. You don't need a facelift or anything, but uh, you'll probably be on TV. Awesome! Oh, wonderful! That's, so it's that's a, okay. you know, there's yeah. no um, what you you do so many different things that you could interview people and in all those different like Reiki and shamanism and the different things, mm-hmm. and so it looks like you're going to be a host of a TV show. Wow, wonderful. And it might be well, on cable, really and it says it won't be this year, but it's in 2020. So you have to let me know if I'm right. Oh, I sure will, yeah. 2020, what a great year for clarity, right? Like the vision. Yeah, well, two is a master number, just like one and two, you know, 11, 11, or 22, 22, those are perfect numbers. So right. next year is your year. Woo, wow, wow. That's amazing. So you, right you. now you have the radio show to focus on, mm-hmm. and somebody may mm-hmm. steal you away from there. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, maybe but I'll your have work to edit thing, that part out. <laughs> and your work thing <laughs> on the work lines, it says you're doing too many things. You're being pulled in too many directions at one time, mm-hmm. especially because you have kids at home, husband to take mm-hmm. care of. You know, so um, you should probably get that down to maybe three things instead of five or seven. <laughs> yes, yes. And just before we started this uh, interview, I think I was mentioning to you then how I've been spending a lot of this time. I feel like I've been waiting and waiting. I've been spending that time to clear those things out, to reduce down the, the overwhelm and, you know, make it well, more Well, yeah, because it was manageable. overload. Yeah, I see overload mm-hmm. on work here. But you had yeah, to get established. You had to get yourself to the point where you are now, you know, and then from there you go forward. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
That's it. So you and know the letter X right means. Along. Okay, you know the letter X means good luck. Mm-hmm. And if you look on your work lines and you know where that is on the heel of your thumb, on the back of your mm-hmm. thumb side, there's an X Correct. right at the age you are today. And we're not going to say your age out loud, but I see it. Oh yes, I you see, see it, it too. Yes. <laughs> I don't yes, make I them do. up, do I? No, no, no. no it's I tell there. you what, I, <laughs> and it says there was all kinds of work, 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 work. This is the thing that's going to do it. It says you'll make a Wonderful. lot of money. Uh, Not that your husband well, can retire, but you'll make a bunch of money. <laughs> You'll be bummed to hear that part. <laughs> yeah, someday, someday. It'll come. Maybe not next year, but it'll come. And then no, it says so next year is your year to blossom. So Wonderful. that means you're going to oh, actually. Exciting. Yeah, so, you know, this is like your babyhood for getting into media. <laughs> It does have that feeling. It really does. New, the newness, the newbie, yeah, the baby kind of feel. And yet I feel very comfortable at the same time. So there's that natural component. Well, because you're a natural. Yeah, yeah <laughs> when you're a natural, it's I, easier. You know, and for the longest time, in hindsight, I can look back at the people I have, the many, many people I said to them, you know, that I love to share. I love to talk. I love to share. I love to bring those tools and, and opportunities to people that they might not have otherwise connected with you know or knew was yeah, even available well, that's what that's what palmistry does it opens your eyes <laughs> yes, you know yes. it, it makes them more aware yeah yes excellent yeah so there's a great great uh example for those of you that are curious and maybe haven't done it or haven't have it in a while and you want to reach out and check out myrna absolutely uh, with remote um, readings as, as well so that's even more intriguing and uh, encouraging excellent yeah and a lot of that's intuitive, too, because I have super thin, like, fine, blonde lines on my hand. tends to make it a little harder to read. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. Um, how long have you been married? 29 years we've been together this year. Wow. As I see where 25 is marked. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So we were did together you celebrate nine that? Years. We, what yes, did you we do? Yes, we did. We were together uh, on our 25th. Is that yeah. what you mean? Gosh, that was a few years ago. I don't recall off the top of my head what we did. We usually take some time to just be together, you know, and go well, it says you marked it in some way, so that's good. <laughs> yes, Same yes, guy. That's a, that's a con- you know, yes, it is. Yes, and I'm like, you know, it deserves some attention and celebration here. This is this is not just, you know, a throwaway kind of celebration. <laughs> yeah, well, you like got that, your you know? soulmate, and that's pretty unusual. <laughs> You know, he yes, is the soulmate. Have... You know that mark by the wrist on your hand, that's mm-hmm. the pyramid shape. You yes, can see at the bottom, it's... right there. Yes. Yeah, right by your wrist. Yeah, I am so very, very grateful. Soulmate. Yes, I'm very, very grateful. As I see this along other couples, you know, they have been in and out of different relationships. And, of course, that relationship for me has been so static and steady. And what a blessed man to tolerate me, <laughs> my <goodness. laughs> Yeah, he is something special, yeah. He really yeah. is. <laughs> but here's the thing. He not... lets you be you. He isn't saying you have he to dress does. or talk how he wants or work no. what, do what he says. He's letting you be yourself. Absolutely. That is one of the most recent awarenesses that I've woke up to lately. Isn't that funny? It has always You never been knew that, that before? <laughs> you know, you get blind to certain things or you see other things about a person than something else. But, you know, through, I think, a lot of my awakening my my healings you know somewhere in there something clicked and i'm going wow he's really allowed me to express who i am and be who i am you know and and, and all my weirdness my glitter and my stones and crystals and all my yeah. sticks and, <laughs> and the jewelry that you made all my, and all, all that all stuff the jewelry yeah, he never and said the oils no and, so. And the tinctures and the yeah all sorts of stuff he's never said no he'll be like yeah i don't know like for himself he doesn't know but he lets me express myself, and that is a really, really beautiful thing. Well, that's why I said one in a million people gets it, and you did it, so, you know. Oh, I'm very grateful. I have definitely felt tons of gratitude this last year. Well, it year doesn't mean sure. perfect. It doesn't mean no. perfect. There's days <laughs> I want to throttle mine, and then the next day I love every hair on his head because I got my soulmate this time. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And even you know, when so you're not just, happy about something, you still feel it in your core that this is your your person, this is your soulmate, or this. Even though it's not a happy moment because something, you know, have drama well, or you're it fighting, works or out come up, you still know. Yeah, there's a knowing that it's going to work out, or that you're still going to make it through. 
and that's helped a ton as well. But yeah, and being a soulmate um, kind of professional on um, the palm readings, a specialist, soulmate specialist, and having your book, tell us a little bit about that book as well. Okay, soulmate so the Connection. book is, um, well, the publisher is Infinity Publishing. I have copies of it, and it's also on Amazon. They all are, except for the May I See Your Handbook, which is out of print, and I just have it recopied all the time. I'm mm-hmm. on the third printing, I think, where I did it. But Soulmate Connections, I had a TV show in Colorado with the same name. That was before I met you. Yeah. So I named the book the same thing. So in the introduction, there's 17 little semi-chapters, and each one is things that your mother never told you about love and romance, like mm-hmm. relationship uh, mistakes not to make this time, uh, red flags to look out for, 15 qualities to look for in a mate, how to recognize a soulmate, how do you connect, and there's different levels that people connect on. Um, just all kinds of things that you didn't ever think about before. What's karma? Are we karma uh, payback debt people? Or are we romantically? Re- there's different kinds of soulmates. And so um, the first 17 pages, if nobody read anything but that, they could go out and find their soulmate. So my publisher called me, and he never does this, and he said, we have 900 authors here. I've never read a single book. I read yours. And I said, oh, that's nice. Why? He said, well, the subtitle got my attention. The title's okay, Soulmate Connections, but when you say you know everything there is to know about relationships, love, all that, I wanted to know. So he says, I'm 57. I've never been married. I'm going out to find my soulmate. I had to send him a wedding present. So he said, Charge 300 for the book. <laughs> and mm-hmm. then there's 46 love stories in there, and every one of them is taken from a poem reading session. And what I tell people is that you only have to resonate with one story <clears throat> or you figure out one thing that gives you a hint what to do, and you just follow what that person did, and you find your soulmate. <clears throat> so are you there? I am, yeah. Fascinating. So these are all true stories, too. It starts with Irma Bombeck, and she was a famous writer. Yes, And then Phil Donahue was in there. Well, I I did. um, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. And when I lived there when I was 16, she was about 24, and she was writing a column. And I set the type on a hot linotype machine, which is hot molten metal, and you type, and it comes down. It's way old-fashioned. But anyway, I set her type, and I never had a single, she couldn't find any mistakes when she proofread her work. So then um, from that, I went into other things there. I did classified ads. I did circulation. I did the front desk. They had me doing everything, and I got to go to college because of Irma Bombeck's hand. Wow. (laughs) Because I read her there, and I got her, and I told her she would write books, and she wrote four or five of them. (laughs) And then when I was in high school, I did Phil Donahue. I've done movie stars you've heard of. I did Ivana Trump before she was divorced. And I told her I saw a divorce coming, and she said, Oh, no, me and the Donald are like this. She holds up two fingers. They got divorced. (laughs) I saw it on her hand. And I did um, Clint Eastwood and Sly Stallone. I did um, people you would have heard of, John Travolta. Kevin Bacon. Those really? are movie stars. And these, are, that people, huh? are these, these are in the Diary of a Palm Reader book? No, they're not in that book, but I did. Some of them are. Phil Donahue's in there. I did him when I was 16. He was 17, and I told him he'd be the first TV talk show host. And he was. Wow, yeah, right, wow. So, and you know, there's so, some amazing stories in there as well. Yeah, so, Both yeah the book the is pretty... Connections. And the book diary is pretty valuable, here. yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the diary has murderers, kidnappers, embezzlers, blackmailers, UFO people, all the other stuff that we see. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and you do get some funny stuff, you know. Yeah. What comes to mind? What kind of a reading do you recall around some of that, those topics that comes to mind that you still remember? That were what, funny or peculiar? Yeah, any of those, yeah. (laughs) I did a guy once, and he came to the door, and I let him in, and I lived in Longmont, Colorado then, 
and I did his hand, and I said, oh, I see you believe in UFOs. And he said, not only do I believe in them, but I have my friends are waiting for me above your house. They want me to get my reading, and then they want me to come hurry up and get in their spaceship. So I, we were in the basement of my house in the room where I was doing reading. So I said, let's go outside and sit on the back porch because that was creepy. So I take him outside, and I'm looking around. <laughs> I don't see anything. And he said, well, they're invisible. You can't see them. So I said, so where were you before you came here? And he said, it took me three days to get here. I was in a nut house. I escaped, <laughs> and I came, oh. um, I hitchhiked, and some nights I slept under the bridge with all the hobos because I didn't have anywhere to go until I got here. Mm. That's about as creepy as they get. Wow, right, right. This guy looked like oh, a giant. He looked like a bear. I mean, he probably weighed 300 pounds. Oh, goodness. And that was creepy, yeah, too. Guy. So then another one, when I did Celebration Fair one time, a guy said, can you give me a really fast reading? And I said, well, no, we all do 20 minutes here. So he said, I know, but the spaceship's circling the building, and they're waiting for me. They want to take me to my new planet. <laughs> and that was the second one that was a Lulu. You know, I call him a Looney Tune. Mm. You know, then I've done people. Stories. Well, then the ones who killed somebody were pretty bad, too, and both of those were at big fairs. I, I used to have a tape recorder, and I'd wear a headset, and one guy, I use a thing to measure their blood pressure. I was checking on his hand, and the, mm -hmm. the little thing I use, it's like an emery board, jumped across some of his hand, clear down on the floor about 10 feet from me. So I had to take off the headset, go pick it up. I came back, I sat down, and I said, so I see you broke the law. And he says, well, I killed somebody, but I just got out. Wow. So I look in his hand, and I said, well, you beat somebody up, and he died. He went into a coma. He said, that's right. But when you commit you know, and you cause a death like that, you have to go to jail. Mm -hmm. And then the right. other one that was creepy like that played chicken with somebody where two guys drive at each other, and nobody gives up, and he caused a head-on collision on purpose. And that guy died, oh. and he had to go to jail. Oh, so I don't wow. know what they were even doing out, but they were both out. And both of them said, you want to see my ankle bracelet? I didn't even know it was on there, you know, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but yeah, I have a million <laughs> stories. Everybody I read is a story, you know. Somebody yeah, called absolutely. me the other day from Colorado that was I did 20 years ago. And she mm -hmm. said, you did a party at my house. I live in blah, 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 blah. And I said, I can describe what you were wearing who was there, where your house is located. She goes, how do you know that? And I said, I don't know. I'm not good on school stuff, but this stuff, I'm 100. I get A++ on this. <laughs> so she was living in the Caribbean or in Mexico or somewhere, and she wanted to know if she should come back. And I said, you gave up Colorado? What, what are you, crazy? <clears throat> so she said, well, she had to get away from a bad relationship, so she went as far away as her money would take her. That was wow. weird, too. Yeah, it's interesting, the stories I imagine that come out, right, during a reading. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Usually I like everybody. Once in a while I get one I don't like, and I don't let them know that, but I don't like what I see on their hand. Right. And sometimes it's a black energy. It's a person who's all negative and that they're nasty with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I can see that. So I just say, so you aren't a laid-back type, are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they say, be, yeah, I should be. It should be good to I? get creative. <laughs> uh, you have to be creative in how you say things. You can't just blurt it out. You know, I can't say, so you're a really ma nasty, mean-spirited, nice, not a nice person. So you can't say that. So I say, so uh, maybe you should try and lighten up a little or take a happy pill. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that would be, yeah, some of the stuff I see even at times when I'm doing readings is, is delicate, not knowing the person. Intuitively, you get that hit, or empathically, I get a hit any case. It's just kind of like, geez. And it says, don't that. say it, don't kinda, say it. Yeah, That's what I hear. There's a feeling yeah. here. Yes, yeah, so it's like that. It's like, be careful what you say or how you say it. And then I sit quiet for a moment to pull it together, you know, just to see what presents as a alternative way. You know, and yeah. sometimes I'll skip over it, and I'm like, let me come back to that. And I'm honest with them. You know, there's, I'm still getting information. Well, we're thinking on ahead part. while we're doing it. Yeah, you have yes, to be thinking yes. the whole time. I say you have yes. to pay attention. 
You know, mm-hmm. they aren't yeah. paying attention. If you're at a fair, they're no. looking all around and they're looking at your fingernails and they're paying attention to other things. And we're looking at the line. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, so. Yeah, there's been some interesting conversations to be had after doing reading. So I don't know when the thing cut out, when my phone quit, but what I was saying was my publisher said he read my book because he he had 900 authors and he didn't read any of them, but he read mine. And he says, I'm 57 years old, I'm going out to find my soulmate now because your book told me what to do. So then he told me to charge $300 for the book. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, then I yeah. had to send him a wedding present. <laughs> uh. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Uh, oh, great. Well, we have maybe 10 more minutes. I'd like to take some of that time before we finish to hear a little more on or hear if something on your Cruise to the Other Side book as well. Okay, well, the one that I'm selling a lot of now is Cruise to the Other Side. And it's the story of a mother and daughter who go on a cruise. The mother's 60, the daughter's 32. She's estranged from her husband. And um, the mother passes away. She falls down the atrium steps. And there's a deathbed scene in the medical center on the ship. And then the daughter is completely bewildered because she keeps seeing visions of her mother. She's in the elevator, gets stuck, and she sees her mother coming towards her on the stainless steel wall. Then she takes a shower, and she feels her mother touching her cheek. Then she washes off the uh, mirror in the bathroom. You know how you wipe it down when it's Mm -hmm. all steamy? And there's her mother Mm -hmm. smiling at her. So she doesn't know what that all means, and she meets a psychic on the ship who takes her under her wing and explex, uh, explains everything metaphysical to her. Then she goes to her mother's apartment to clean it out when the cruise is over, and the mother left a clue and said, I have a, a, tro- a big trove of money put away for you. It's in a secret place. You have to find it. So she tears the apartment apart, can't find it. She goes into the um room the storage building in the back of the apartment and she sees a little piece of paper up on the ceiling just sticking out of one of the rafters so she gets a ladder she climbs up there and gets it and it tells her where to look for the money and she had a million dollars stuck saved in the false bottom of the suitcase and she Mm. finds it so that's part of it but then there's also she hears a radio show called your psychic radio show So she calls him to try and get on, and she's the last caller, and she talks to the guy and asks him where she should look for the money. And then somebody calls her, and they had her phone number because she had called in. And he says, I'm the director or the producer of this show, and I want to come and see you. But he really wasn't. He was an imposter, and he was going to try and rip her off, but she figured out that he didn't look like he would be a producer, and she ran away from him. There's just a whole lot of things. She buys a crystal ball because somebody told her to, but it didn't work. She couldn't see anything but crystal when she looked into it. So it's um, every page has a twist and a turn on it. And that book, I'm selling pretty good on that book. And then the Soulmate book sells like mad. And then the May I See Your Hand book sells pretty much because every class I do, everybody has to buy it. Plus, mm-hmm. other people hear about it and want to teach themselves, which you could right from the book. You can teach yourself. And then um, the diary of a palm reader is all those other stories that isn't love-related, and some of them are pretty interesting. A woman in Colorado mm-hmm. gets taken. Uh, she's in a bar, and a guy tells her, let's go up and see my cabin up in the mountains. He takes her up there, and he ties her up. And he'd already tied up other people and killed them. In the backyard of his cabin is a whole lot of dead bodies. He buried every one of them. So she discovers that there's something not right, and she gets away from him, tells him she has an appointment with the city offices. So he drives her back down to Boulder, drops her off, and she calls the police right away. And they catch him in the waterfall that's um, on the way up to the mountains. There's a waterfall everybody goes to, and he's washing his clothes. So that's an actual true story, and that's in the diary. But that was creepy. That creeped that me is. out when she told me. So there's mm-hmm. all kinds of interest. Each story is maybe two or three pages long. A person could sit it on a coffee table, read one story, put it away, another day pick it up, or take it to work and read it on your break. You know, just read a little bit 
one story every day and you'd have it. There's 42 mm-hmm. stories in that one. Wow, right on. So, so I love all my yeah. books. Now I'm writing another one. And this one's a cruise ship again, but this time it's a kidnapping of a newborn baby or a two-month-old Whoa. baby. And mm-hmm. mostly people don't go on a cruise ship with a baby, but this family won a free trip and they had to use it within a year. And until she had the baby, they couldn't go. Then she wouldn't let anybody take care of her baby while she was gone. So they took it and they hired a nanny, and the nanny is the one who's going to kidnap the baby. And the reason she does it is a palm reader in New York tells her she's going to go over water and make $100,000, but she has to do something that will break the law first. That's what it is. All right. That's exciting to look So I have a good imagination. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Oh, you know, any kind of an author, you know, that's a good author is going to have a good imagination. Well, I had to put myself in. I'm right on the cruise ship with them. You know, I was right there when I wrote it. So I'm halfway yes, done. So, <clears throat> I was going to say that's so helpful for the reader because as you're you're in that position, like you're on the cruise ship, right, then the reader kind of feels like they're sitting in that same place, like they are also on that cruise ship. Right? Yeah, that they can understand it, yeah. yeah. Well, this Thank one's going to be called What Happened on Emerald Deck because every deck on the ship, every floor is called a deck. And this mm-hmm. is a mystery of what happened, and it's got the palm reader in the story in the beginning. And her name is Ruby, and she's a gypsy type, and she's in New York, and she only wears rubies because that's her name. And she's got mm-hmm. her little palm reading store is all fixed up in bright red ruby color, you know. So that was mm-hmm. imagination, too. Yes, yes, I think those are great books. really gets us out of our box. Right. Just yeah, well, they're all on my website. Anybody could look them up anytime they want. And let's give my website again. It's yeah, www. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want me to do it? Dot Yep, excellent. Myrnalu, M-Y-R-N-A-L-O-U, Myrnalu.com. So your books can be found there, or they can also be found on Amazon, correct? And so everybody that um, looks it up Mm -hmm. usually has a good time with it. In uh, 2012, my husband won all kinds of awards. He did my website, and it came out that it was the 12th best website in the U.S. on palmistry, and it said I was Mm -hmm. the number six best palmist in the world. Wow. So 2012, I was on the top of the game. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Still really out there. I have yet to find very many. There's so few. There really are so few. Um, and of course, truly intuitive or authentic palm readers of, of that. Well, caliber. yeah, a lot of them make stuff up, and I prove every line when somebody's sitting with me, or just like I did with mm-hmm. you on here. Mm-hmm. I said, do you see that line right by your work lines? And the work lines are on the thumb side of your hand. And you said, mm-hmm. yeah, I see it. You know, because I can't make stuff up. I would make up stuff a lot better than what's there. I tell the truth. <laughs> so Yeah, right? <laughs> you have to tell the yeah. truth, yeah. Yes, yes. It does help to be able to point it on the lines. And some people don't care to look and some will look to, you know, want to look and see it. And uh, it's, yeah, I like to point it out as well. I like to show them that it's all right there. Uh, you know, yeah, a reflection well, that, of, then they can't argue happening. about it or say no, no, uh-uh. A lot of times people, you know, will say, no, you're, you don't have me at all. I don't know who you're reading. This isn't me. And then when we get all done, they go, well, I lied. It was me. I wanted to see what you do. Yeah, there have been similar things said, like in a reading where I'll be like, oh, your natural expression, you know, is, is this or that. And, of course, they're like, nope, that's not me. I'm not, nothing like that. I go, no, hear me out. It's your natural expression. <laughs> you have <laughs> yeah. a different formation of coping or dealing with life, you know, that's throwing you out of your natural expression in that way. I go, but this is, and I go, now you'll know, feel it, you know, when you see this, when, I, when you hear this from me, you know, doesn't that resonate? Does, wouldn't that be a place or wouldn't that natural expression make you happy? You know, like this is validation. They're going, yeah, yeah. So they yeah, can acknowledge right. Then they that, agree with you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, they acknowledge then that they've changed how their natural expression is just to cope or deal or, you know, whatever's currently happening in their life. Um, but, yeah, they'll deny yeah. it. First, they'll be like, no, that's not me. But actually, it is. It's your real you, you know. <laughs> so tell me what the name of your show is so I can put it on my website, too. It is called Mystery and Wonder. 
mystery and, and wonder. wonder. Okay, yes. I'm going to put that on my radio. Sh- I have a list mm-hmm. of radio shows in one of the pages on my website. I've done 250 of them, but I didn't put them way back, you know, years and years ago. I started with yeah. probably 1991 or of 96, all the places I think. You've interviewed. Oh, well, I started wow. with 96, I think. Yeah. Those were the- so there's been lots of them, yeah. Yes, yes, excellent. Lots well, of this one was a lot of fun. Copies? It was a lot of fun, and thank you, Myrna, for being here. Yeah, do you keep these on your website as well, your interviews from past? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And a so lot of people write to me and, and they say they listen to yeah. an interview like yours, you know, like this one, and they'll say, uh-huh. I heard that. Do I get the 50% off too? And, of course, if they tell me what show, that's why I needed to know the name of your show. If right, they say right. who they heard it on, then I'll honor the 50% off. Right, right. That makes sense. Excellent. And then Very I give good. them a right. typed, I do a remote typed report that's about five or six pages long. Yes, when you're doing a remote one, right. You type it up the, rather than being on the phone with the person and reading their palm from the phone. Well, then it goes away and they don't up, have right. anything in front of them. So then they can call me yeah. up after they get it and discuss it if there's anything they didn't understand. Yes, yes, that's always nice. That's a great way to do it. It gives you time to really focus on the information, report it down, and then have them read it and call back with some questions. Yeah, that's, that's what they do, yeah. Excellent. All right. So we are now at the end of our interview. Thank you again, Myrna, for being here. It's been such a pleasure. That to was a fast hour. Wasn't that a fast hour? It, it fast really hour. was. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, catching up and having lots of laughs, I think that really made the time fly. <laughs> yeah, well, and I've, right. missed, I've missed seeing you, too, so that this was like yeah. seeing you all over again. It is, yeah. I yeah. very, very much enjoyed it. Thank you again. And for our listeners, please yes, continue to check out Myrna and all her offerings. Take advantage of that 50% special. Visit her website at MyrnaLou.com or email her at palmist at MyrnaLou.com. And uh, we make your connection and see how this can help you get back onto a path that's more in your alignment. And, of course, if you'd like to find out more about me, and what I have to offer, please check out my website at soulbalancing.world. And we will catch you again on the next one around. Thanks again, everybody. And thank you for having me. Bye-bye. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. But heard instead, dear listeners, through podcast radio on realrevolutionradio.com. Never before has inspirational podcast radio been taken to this next level of wow. Until now. Today in the age of information, more and more people are searching for answers. And in solutions. And how to better approach and perceive every day-to-day concerns. By tuning in to realrevolutionradio.com. Isn't it about time we take back our lives? Back in consciousness. In a higher state of awareness. In the evolution of our own state of higher well-being. Yes, we can do so consciously every day by tuning in to the many groundbreaking and third eye opening podcasts. Our new Cleveland based network of over 33 paradigm shifting internet talk shows only on realrevolutionradio.com. Be part of that change. Evolve. Be inspired. Wherever you go, however you go. For energy on the go, it's got to be 5-Hour Energy. Works fast, works long, tastes good. And with zero sugar and four calories, there's nothing holding you back. Fits your pocket, fits your backpack, fits your on-the-go life wherever and whenever you need to feel alert and energized. 5-Hour Energy. Energy on the go. Want to save money on 5-Hour Energy's most popular flavors? Just go to your neighborhood Walmart.